Hello everybody, um, it's Chrissy from Knitting in the Heights. <laughs> I've had an adventurous day. Um, some people have mentioned that New York is complicated and boy howdy are they not wrong. So I have um, been in the process of trying to get my driver's license switched over because it just recently expired. And so I had an appointment, I finally had time to go have an appointment because you're, you know, you can use your driver's license and for a year after it expires actually by law. Anyway, so I had all the documents together, so I thought. And in New York, because we're everybody's switching over to the real ID, you have to have like further documentation, right? Like you have to have your birth certificate, you have to have like utility bills and your lease, and um, what else do you have to have? Um, you have to have your old driver's license. You have to have, I, it's like Rumpelstiltskin. You have to have like your firstborn's like first tooth that they ever lost. I, I promise you, it's crazy. So anyway, I have an early appointment. I've been waiting for over a week for this appointment. I go in, they have me fill out some forms and you know, I'm like, all right, cool. So I fill out all the forms. They, t they do my eye test, you know, they take my picture and I'm like, okay, this is going well. So I hand them everything and they're looking at my birth certificate. And my birth certificate is the original certificate that came from the hospital back in the 1970s and it's the only certificate I have. And I've used it to like get my passport. <laughs> like I've used it for other things. And just as an FYI, my passport has also expired during the pandemic and I'm in the process of renewing that as well. So I don't actually legally have in the United States an unexpired ID with my picture on it. Like I have all the other things you need. Like I have my social security card. I brought that as well today. Anyway, so like, I don't know how much more I can prove I'm me because I can't show my passport because they are not going to accept it because it's expired. Like I have my driver's license from another state and it's clearly me in the picture, but they need my birth certificate. Anyway, they take it back and they scan all my documents. They're like, yeah, we can't accept this birth certificate. And I'm like, why? They said, because it's not from the state of New York. It's like issued by this hospital in this county. So I'm like, oh, geez. Okay. So I'm like, all right. So there's nothing you can do. They're like, there's nothing you can do, but keep all your documents together. Cause like, as soon as you get a copy of your birth certificate, it's fine. So I'm like, cool. So I, as I'm waiting for the bus, I start like ordering online. Like I talked to my dad about it and he's like, that's dumb. I said, I know it's dumb. <laughs> it's totally dumb. So anyway, I'm like, all right, fine. So I, and this is the only birth certificate I've ever had. Now, if my parents had another birth certificate, they never gave it to me, which is very plausible. So anyhow, um, I looked at the lady and I was like, you do know like back in the 70s, they were issued by the counties. They were never issued by the state. Parents didn't get certified copy. Like anyway, <laughs> so like I had the original original. Anyway, so I order online the fastest way. It says it's the fastest way to get your birth certificate in New York. And I'm like, great, because I need this because I need to like get a new driver's license and like have an identity because that's a big deal. Anyway, so I order this stuff online and I put in everything that they need and I get the receipt and I'm looking at the receipt when I get home and I'm like, wait a minute. It says that the estimated shipping date is like in May, 2024. That's not going to work. <laughs> That's really not going to work. I can't travel. I can't do things. Like that does not work. That does not work. And I'm just like, oh boy. Okay. So then I call the, I call them and I'm like, is this right? Like, are you really estimating that I would get my, my personal birth certificate? Not like my great grandparents, not like whatever. They're like, yeah, no, that's the soonest we can deliver it. Actually the, it, the, it could be as late as June 7th. And I'm like, what is going on with the world here? This is uh crazy pants. So I call my dad, my and I'm really like freaking out at this point because I need an identity. <laughs> like I, I need it to be able to travel. Like I need it for so many things. Like there, you need your ID for so many things. And again, my passport is currently expired. And I know it takes, because I don't have any like travel immediately out of the country. Like I can't get it like in one to two weeks. And it would cost like a thousand dollars to do that. It's not going to happen. As is, it's going to cost like $200 to expedite it five to seven weeks. Cause I feel like I really need that as well. Anyhow. So, all right. So I'm freaking out. I'm going to tell my dad, my dad's like, that's ridiculous. And he's like getting really like upset. And I'm like, yeah, it's ridiculous. And I'm upset. Like I'm super upset at this point. And 
So anyway, he's like, there's got to be a faster way. You know, if we need to, we'll drive you up to Albany and you'll just wait in line. And I'm like, okay, if we got to do that, we got to do that. Like, I guess we'll figure that out. So anyhow, um, so like I calm down and I'm like, all right, the county or the city I was born in, you should be able to get your own vital records from them, right? So let me like not go through the state system and let me actually try to talk to a person because I was born in a small kind of town in upstate. It is actually upstate New York. It's not Westchester County. It's actually up. It's like near Albany. Um, that's where my dad went to school. So I called this lady and she was an angel. She's like, oh yeah, we can totally help you with that. I said, well, how long does this usually take? She says, the mailing time. Basically, as soon as we receive it, we basically turn it around within 24 hours and we'll send it back to you. So, you know, just depends on when you send it. And like, it was going to cost to expedite my birth certificate through the state, like, and through this vital check organization, which, you know, they're great if you're doing genealogy, by the way, because they do actually help you get genealogical records pretty fast, but apparently not post COVID because that's the issue. <laughs> like the lady was telling me at this, like the vital records office, she was like, yeah, no, they're really not great since COVID. They're super backed up. And I'm like, okay, well, you guys are amazing and you need a raise and you're my favorite person right now. So anyhow, um, instead of being like $80, it's $20 for two copies <laughs> and they're going to get it to me as soon as I send the paperwork out, which will be first thing in the morning tomorrow. Cause I need to get, I'm not going to send cash in the mail. That's, that's silly. So I'm going to send them um, a money order. So I have to go to the post office. And since I don't own a printer, I have to actually wait for the stuff to be printed at like an um, office supply store. And I'm doing my passport at the exact same time, by the way, because this is like freaking ridiculous. Like I am just so angry <laughs> that this world is so complicated and so weird. Oh, golly. And yes, I fully recognize I should have done this earlier. I fully accept all of that. I had every intention of doing it earlier. I had like DMV appointments, but things happened and life happens. And I knew that I had some like time. And when I could should have gotten it done, it was like when I was like preparing for the summer camp and, and doing all this other stuff. So I didn't really have time because again, it my license literally just expired. So in the interim, because I know how long it takes to get an appointment at the DMV as well, I set up an appointment like well in advance, like for November 20th, that hopefully I can move earlier if I get my birth certificate earlier. So yeah, adventures in living in New York City. <sighs> yeah, this place. The honest truth of living in New York City is it is exciting. It is invigorating. It is has so much energy and there's so much going on all the time and it's wonderful, but the bureaucracy and the complicatedness of everything is so ridiculous. Like I had my passport with me as well today. It's expired. My driver's license from North Carolina expired, but you look at it and you look at me and you know, it's the same person. Like really? Who's trying to look like this? <laughs> like what kind of doppelganger would want that? Anyway, enough. <laughs> so it's been an adventurous, emotional, <laughs> stressful kind of day, y'all. Anyhow, um, yeah. So we're going to leave it there for a minute. I'll come back later. I need to eat some lunch. I'm hungry. Uh, that was a lot of stress. <laughs> See you soon. So here's an update on the bureaucracy saga. Um, so now that I have it all figured out what I've got to do to update my, get my um, birth certificate, I'm just waiting on Gabe to get home. I did get all the paperwork printed and um, I just need to take it. I have everything ready now. I just need to take it to the post office. Now, as I'm trying to get my passport done as well, printed off their PDF form and it was all messed up. So while I'm at the post office today, I need to get a renewal form at the post office. Fill that out tonight with the same information <laughs> that I had typed into the form and paid to have printed. Um, so I need to do that. Um, yeah, so that's, what's going on. Um, today has just been a weird day. Uh, this post office, I mean, not the post office, but the bureaucracy thing, that whole thing for me became such a thing. Um, 
Maybe it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it felt like a really big deal. <laughs> it just felt like I wasn't a person. It was like, I don't know. It's just strange. Um, yeah, so just waiting on Gabe. It's about 3.15. He should be home by 3.30-ish usually is between 3.30 and 3.40. I don't want to go now because um, it's several blocks away. And then as soon as I leave and I'm in line at the post office, I'll get the text saying, Oh, we'll be there in five minutes. And their five minutes is like two and a half minutes, three minutes. <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to wait for Gabe. Um, but in the interim, I think I'm just going to watch a couple of vlogs. Um, yeah. And there's this really, okay. So since we're, we can talk ghosty stuff, that's fun. Um, there's this uh, duo of ghost hunters I watch on YouTube called Sam and Colby. And I know I've mentioned them before. They're doing this thing um, called Hell Week um, that they do every, like, leading up to Halloween, like, the two weeks leading, like, the week leading up to Halloween, and they have a bunch of videos. So they're staying in the Conjuring house for a full week. And it's, cr yeah, I'm going to need to watch the next episode. I'm pretty sure it dropped just a few minutes ago because it's showing up on my feed. So that'll be very interesting. And I think that will be very knitworthy. And let's calm Chrissy's nervous system down after she had a whole meltdown. Listen, I got a lot going on right now. Remember that whole change thing I talked about? There's a lot going on around that right now. And a lot of things are very stressful. Anyhow, <laughs> so I will check in with you guys later. Another day to find you shine away. I'll be coming for your love, okay? Take on me, take me on. I'll be gone in a day. Well, I'm starting to feel better, everybody, because knitting is a tonic. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm going to call it an early night. I am enjoying watching tonight's Sam and Colby for sure. Very good. Like, if you love spooky, ghosty stuff, got to check it out. Anyhow, I hope everybody has a wonderful night and just a couple seconds. Well, get your own ghost story about New York City. See you soon. Bye. Deep in the heart of Greenwich Village is the restaurant One If By Land, Two If By Sea. This restaurant has a long history in New York City. It was originally the carriage house of Aaron Burr, one of the country's first vice presidents and the person who ended up shooting and killing Alexander Hamilton in a duel. This restaurant is believed to be haunted by at least 20 ghosts. One person may be Aaron Burr. After all, it was his carriage house. Another person is a woman who dresses in a black gown who has been seen walking down the staircase but never up. There's also a ghost who inhabits the office. And there's another ghost believed to be a Zigfield Follies girl. Finally, there are two other men that are known of, one that likes to linger by the fireplace and the other that likes to use the front door. Some of the activity in the space is picture frames tilting, machinery activating by themselves, cold spots, flying plates, flickering lights. Sometimes staff members will be pushed, but nobody is there. Also, waiters have tried to attempt to serve people that will just disappear. It is an amazing piece of New York history and if you can get reservations, it's supposed to be some really good eats. <laughs>